Okay, so with our little digression into history done, let's get to some let's get to some simulated data. So as always, um, you know how I recommend approaching these things. I recommend that you simulate some data so that you know the result that you're hoping to get, and then you implement your analysis, and then hopefully at the end you get the result that you that you put in. And that way, when you are bringing it to real data, then you know that at least the analysis method is working and so you, you have some idea of what is going wrong or where you can focus your time. So we're going to explore a simulation that is going to focus on the canonical example. So, so this is health status, smoking and tax rates. And so we will generate different tax rates on cigarettes uh, by province. And so we'll have two provinces, Alberta and Nova Scotia. So let's say that Alberta had a low tax rate and Nova Scotia has a high tax rate. And then we're going to generate some data based on that. So we'll set a seed, always set a seed, that way your results are reproducible or, or it helps uh, make your results more reproducible. Uh, a surprising number of you didn't set a seed for your exam, for your first exam. So we're setting a seed and then we are going to generate 10,000 observations. So we're going to have individuals and so we're going to have 10,000 individuals. So this is here. And then we are going to randomly decide, are they a smoker or not? And so this is just sampling from zero or one um, for 10,000 times. And, it, and we haven't specified the probability here, and so they're going to be um, equally weighted. So we would expect that we would have around about 5,000 smokers and around about 5,000 non-smokers. So we're building up, we're simulating our data, so we need to, we need to we need to go backwards from, from the normal way. And so now we need to relate whether somebody is a smoker to their health. Now there's a bunch of different ways that we could measure health, but we'll just ran, we'll just we'll just model it as a draw from a normal distribution. And if they're a smoker, then we're going to make their health lower than if they're a non-smoker. Um, And so here we're adding in a new variable, health. And if you are not a smoker, then we're going to draw from the standard normal, uh, from the random normal distribution centered around one with a standard deviation of one. And if you are a smoker, then we're going to draw from the standard normal distribution set so mean of zero and standard deviation of one. And so the health of people who do not smoke will be slightly higher on average than the health of people who don't, who do smoke, than the health of people who do smoke. Then we need to relate the smoking rates to provinces. So we're going to say that the provinces have different tax rates on smoking. And so if you are a smoker, then we want it to be slightly more likely that you are in, uh, sorry, if you are not a smoker, then sure, you can be between the two, that's fine. If you are a smoker, then we want to make it slightly more likely that you are in Alberta than that you are in Nova Scotia. And the reason that we are going to make that slightly more likely, the way that I'm doing that is by adjusting the probabilities. So the default is just that they're half and half or, or that they're equally weighted in sample. And so here we are actually specifying, putting a little bit more weight on Alberta. And the reason that we're going to do that is up here, we are going to say that Alberta had a low tax rate on cigarettes. And so what we're expecting is that therefore Alberta should have more smokers. And so finally, we just need to add in our tax rates because that's what we're actually going to put into our model. And so we're just going to just going to add in add in the tax rates. And so Alberta has a low tax rate compared with Nova Scotia, which has a slightly higher tax rate. And we're done. 
So we can see that there are slightly more people in Alberta than in Nova Scotia. And so that's going to slightly adjust our results. So one thing that we could do is we could actually do some matching and things like that if we wanted to here. But we'll just go through and just give an example. So we can have a look at the data, and so the data person is just this unique counter, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, through to 10,000. Smoker is going to be 0, 1, all the way through, um, and so you're either a smoker or you're not. Health is going to be a draw from the random normal, uh, and the mean of that draw depends on whether you were a smoker or you were not. Province is going to be Alberta or Nova Scotia, and tax is completely determined by which province you're in. So if you're in Alberta, then your tax rate is going to be 0.3, and if you're in Nova Scotia, your tax rate is going to be 0.5. So it's completely determined at this point. So as always, once we have some data, we pretty much, the first step should always be to graph it. And remembering there's two sort of go-to graphs, so histograms and scatter plots. And so first we're going to, so we're going to look at histograms just to show what's going on here. And so on the x-axis it's going to be health and we're going to color these things based, we're going to color the bars based on whether you're a smoker. And so we can see that we do get sort of the result that we want. So our health rating is on the bottom here. And so people who do not smoke do seem to, in general, have a slightly higher um, health rating than people who do smoke. So the, that's the blue line. So the blue columns are people who do smoke. We can also see that we've got some uh, unbalancedness in terms of the samples. And so there's some other interesting things going on. And so if you're interested in, in really diving into this example, then you could go through and try and uh, rebalance things and uh, and have some more fun with it but we'll, we'll just we'll just keep going through with this simulated example to show a couple of different ways so three different ways of getting an estimate of the effect of smoking on health so we'll go through with our first example and so this is the first example this is this is the this is the first example as the first way of generating an effect um, as Gilman and Hill introduce it and so we first regress health on tax. And so this is, health is our outcome variable and tax is our instrumental variable. And so that's going to give us one regression. We then do a, another regression, which is to regress whether you're a smoker on tax. So that gives us another variable. And then we look at the coefficient the ratio of the coefficient, the ratio of the coefficients on our instrumental variables, and we find that that ratio is equal to um, minus uh, 0.85. And the interpretation here is it saying that if you smoke, then your health is likely to be worse than if you don't smoke. So we're not quite getting our minus one because of the unbalancedness and things like that. But so. so that's one way to do instrumental variables. You just, you just do two regressions um, where the explanatory variable is the instrumental variable that you have of interest, and then you look at the ratio of the coefficients, and then you're done. But you can probably imagine that's going to break down fairly quickly uh, in anything other than the most simple of examples. And you also don't have um, uncertainty and measures of uncertainty around it and everything like that. And so the way that we typically go to estimating instrumental variables is in a two-stage regression context. And so the first stage is you regress uh, whether someone is smoker, uh, whether someone is a smoker on the tax rate. So this is the uh, the treatment variable, so smoker, as a function of the instrumental variable. So in this case, tax. We then work out what is that variable. What is that variable um, saying? So what are our forecasts? for whether someone's a smoker just based on, in this case, the tax rate. And so this is where we get those fitted values. So you can see perhaps why we spent so much time 
using the broom package and things like that because that's going to make it a little bit easier uh, for us to 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 do these things um, at scale. So we have those we have those forecasts we have those fitted values, and so it's those fitted values that we then use to try and explain health in this second stage. We can then look at the results of the second stage and we see that we get the exact same estimate that we had before. So 0.85, 0.85, but it's um, in the context of a regression. And so we have uh, standard errors and, and all of the uncertainty measures that we would hope for. The other nice thing about this two-stage way of thinking is that it makes it pretty clear what's going on. So tax is affecting smoking rates. We look at uh, we look at what we would expect in terms of smoking rates, in terms of whether you're a smoker, um, based just on taxes, and we feed that in to try and explain health. And you can see why our instrumental variable is is so powerful, uh, more or less hopefully. So those of you who have a little bit more stats uh, will realize that our standard errors um, in this context aren't really going to be uh, entirely appropriate. In, in particular, we need slightly different standard errors, errors. And so that's why we might actually use a dedicated package. We could do this manually, but um, this is why we might do a use of dedicated package, and we'll get to that in the next section.